of y'all have interest and have contacted us uh, regarding the decision the university had to postpone fraternity recruitment. There's a uh, uh, statement on the website. I won't, I won't go into that. Y'all can all have reference to that, and uh, Margaret has access to that for you. I wanted to just really issue a statement real quick, and I'll answer some questions real quick. Last April, uh, the student affairs staff um, conducted a series of meetings with our fraternity uh, system leadership. Uh, those meetings were with chapter presidents, uh, new member educators, chapter and faculty advisors, alumni housing corporation presidents. We followed those meetings up uh, uh, with letters to all of those groups and also to uh, the national organizations. And basically what we were asking them to do was to educate themselves about their policies, uh, their own policies, and when they return to the university in the fall to comply with those policies. It's just a fairly simple request. Uh, beginning Sunday morning, uh, August 14th, through Wednesday after and late afternoon, the 17th, we had six reports filed with the Office of Greek Light uh, regarding uh, six of the 18 fraternities. We had six reports about six of those groups that participated in events with recruitment that involved alcohol. And uh, those events, fortunately, did not lead to uh, any major problems, but they were very challenging incidents. Uh, two of those incidents, which were most disturbing, uh, occurred after uh, individuals had been uh, uh, asked directly by the members of the Greek Life staff, the undergraduate students, uh, to please enforce their rules and to do what they were asked to do. Um, the uh, decision was fairly simple once a third of, uh, of your groups uh, are basically not uh, complying with their own rules and complying with the rules of, of recruitment. Uh, the decision was made at that point to, to stop, let's just say, where we are, what we're going to do, uh, and that's where the point we are now. Uh, we are going to move forward uh, with the students, the faculty, the staff, the alums of the university, the national organization representatives, and we're soliciting input to how to resolve this matter. I, I, I've never been involved in something uh, like this in my you know, 30 plus years in, in higher education, um, and so we're looking for answers. Uh, you know, the university has a wonderful, wonderful uh, history of contributions from our fraternity system. Uh, the members of that community provided leadership, still do to the university for many, many years. And we're, we, without a doubt, I think this will strengthen that relationship between the university and those groups. Uh, we just got to work our way through it. So, uh, question. The incidents, can you describe, is it just an incident of there's alcohol there and they can't have alcohol there, or is it some specific problem, underage drinking, what, what were the problems? All the above. Uh, we, some, in, some of it, uh, you know, individuals, there were individuals that, that uh, uh, and I can't speak to specifics, but some individuals, there was an individual that was harmed, there was, you know, who just, just doing uh, foolish things. Uh, individuals drinking underage, provided to them, drinking too much. There were some health concerns uh, related to some individuals that attending those functions, related to the drinking and what it, what it had done to them. So, um, all the above on those. How did these situations come to your attention? How? Yes. Well, they were reported. Uh, people report incidents to us all the time. And, uh, you know, we have six <laughs> incidents reported to us. Are y'all not seeing similar things with the sororities on campus as well? No, absolutely not. And is this only concerning the IFC, or is this the extent to multicultural and PHC groups well, as well? There's, there's 18 uh, groups that are participating in the group right now, the fraternity council. And uh, uh, I think all of those 18 are members of the NIC. You know, we, we group fraternities and sororities. We don't, we don't split them out. So of those 18, I think they're there. We, uh, the other groups, I don't think, are participating in the group. Can you name which fraternities were reported? Uh, no, I don't think that'd be. We haven't done that. We're working through the discipline system on now on those. What do y'all want students to take away from this situation? Well, I, I think two things, three things. Uh, I'd like for uh, students uh, to understand that, that their organizations, uh, particularly fraternities and sororities, place themselves to a higher standard. And they have their own policies and their own rules, which if you read them all, which you know I, I've encouraged people to do, are, are very... Uh, you know, admirable. You want to you say, "Gosh, that's great." Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, they're window dressing to some people, and they're not following. So that, that's one thing. Uh, I'd like to think about it that the university cares about their health and safety. That's, this is what this is about. I mean, you know, we're we're talking about we have to have an environment, and we're going to have an environment where our students are safe, and uh, uh, you know, they're not going to not going to be harmed. 
Uh, and I think the last thing is, is we've got to transform this system to where individuals are committed to doing the right thing. And individuals can put aside their individual uh, organization needs for the good of the whole. And that's, and that's really important to me. And, and, and we're going to get there. We'll get there. Do the fraternities face any sanctions from the school other than the recruitment being postponed? Can they possibly be suspended, anything like that? All the above. We're, we're still exploring that. We, you know, this is quick. This is, I mean, I, uh, you know, I was quoted in the Daily Gamecock saying, I, I've never seen anything like this, and we've got to have some time. And that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to rush into anything. We're, you know, a lot of things we can do real quick, uh, but we're trying not to do those. We're trying to figure out. We're trying to talk to people. We're going to do a series of Monday and Tuesday of uh, call-in forums and, and open forums to talk to our community, the university community, and get some input. We're getting a lot of input, uh, overwhelmingly positive input, uh, about the university uh, addressing this issue and addressing it uh, straightforward. And, and we're addressing it like this press conference. We, you know, we're not we're, we're saying this is the issue. We're going to deal with it. I know there might be concern that there's not just alcohol uh, or problems with drinking or underage drinking going on within fraternity and sororities. Uh, do y'all have any plans to tackle this issue as far as the entire student body is concerned? Well, we've done that. We've got a handout uh, that Dr. Margaret will give you, that the media relations people that talk about. We spend an incredible amount of time and effort and energy. We've got a lot more to do, as we all do, uh, to uh, work on that topic. But yeah, that's that's a critical issue for our age group in uh, higher education. Now, were any of these students were they arrested, anything like that, charged as far as the alcohol violations are concerned? Yes. Okay. Can you say how many? I don't, I don't have those reports. Yes. You talked about the Monday and Tuesday open forums. Do you guys have any sort of timetable that you're working with for when this decision will ultimately be made? Cameron, we're working on that, and we'll let you know. It'll, we'll all go out through Margaret, and uh, we'll get it on the website as soon as we're working on that. And just fast as we can. As as it's as opening as week, guys. i got to get, you know, there's a lot more going on besides this, but, I, you know, we'll get it. As far as recruitment being postponed, is, it, is this just rush activities, or is this everything? No pledging, nothing? Well, that is, pledging is, okay. uh, is, is that. We've asked them to not do that. Okay. Um, there are a couple uh, fraternities that have already received sanction letters that suspend in different stages of, of activity. Uh, those are all in the discipline process. So we're, we're, we're shell, it, it's a lot to do right now. And we want to we wanna work with everybody. And so we're, we're, we're taking our time and doing what we need to do. Can you we're, say what law enforcement agency y'all are working with or these students have been well, I, charged you, under? Or? You know, I don't, I don't know all those specifics. I don't have them. Explain briefly the steps the university took before coming to this. Well, Josh, um, you know, it was really important to us. You know, we value ourselves to be a community of, you know, where we all work together. And, and as an educator, um, it is very important to have uh, student input. Uh, we spent a great deal of time starting last April with our student leadership. Uh, and asking them and informing them and educating them and giving them our uh, point of view on, on their own rules and regulations. Uh, we spent, the Greek life staff spent an incredible amount of time uh, early in the week when, when the first incident, the second incident occurred, uh, meeting with the chapter presidents, meeting with the system leadership, uh, and unfortunately uh, uh, that, that, those meetings didn't result in any action that prevented things from still happening. So that's what brought us to the point of entering. You know, this is, we don't take this with would like to do something like this. This is not something that you know that, that any of us wanted to do or where we wanted to go. But it's it's it'll be a good learning experience for everybody. Are you trying to send a clear statement to, to all Greek fraternity sororities that this kind of is an this activity is inappropriate, will not be tolerated, and sanctions will be rendered against students? I, I think we want to send a statement to to everyone that, that for all students that we, we don't tolerate behavior that is abusive. That puts people at risk health-wise, you know, we are dealing in this situation with, with the fraternity rush, but, you know, this is a message to all our students, you know, guys, it, it's, we've got to follow the rules, we've got to follow the rules, and please do that, and please respect that, and, uh, you know, that's all, that's what we got to do, that's, that's what a community does. Do you foresee any uh, expulsions or removal of fraternities from the campus Greek life facilities over there, is it be removed from campus at all? At that's too or? early to tell. Do the infractions the infractions possibly lead up to such activity. Well, we're still collecting information, so I uh, I can't I can't make a judgment on that at this point. Excuse my lady, we were covering the Rick Perry. Um, how about sororities? Are they Rick Perry? More important than Rick? <laughs> Don't tell me that. Come on. How about sororities? Are they involved in this? No, not at all. Not at all. Why did I, you that's still? a that's a that's a that's a to two totally different okay. two different groups. Totally different.
They're having record recruitment. I mean, that's a, that should be the story that's on the front fold of the newspaper rather than. Oh, we like this one better. Yeah, I know you did. Juicier. Why did you postpone all of fraternity recruitment instead yes. of just for the offending uh, organizations? Well, and that, that's a good point. And, and uh, the reason that was, and said so we we met. I, I became involved yesterday. I met with all the presidents of these groups, and I asked them to hold their peers accountable. And unfortunately, they didn't take that opportunity at that point to, to hold their peers accountable and to, and to do where we needed to be. So that at that point, that meeting was yesterday afternoon at 4.30, followed by last night by our statement around 8 o'clock that, hey, it's all off for now. USC was recently ranked the top party school. What do you think that this kind of, how do you think that kind of plays into it? Or do you think there's a link between this or? Do I? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's, you know, that's a, uh, yeah, that's the Princeton Review you know, selling websites and selling services. That's not about what our campus. I don't know if they've ever been to our campus. But no, I don't. Uh, I, I see our environment is not like any, any other environment uh, where we have students that are, you know, young adults who are, are doing things and experimenting. And it's our job as educators to, to, to shape that environment. That's what we're trying to do here. Now, um, I guess with the the fraternity type of environment, some say that, or some might believe that this has been kind of going on for a, a long period of time. Are, is this just now coming to light or have y'all been working to curb issues like this all along? Or? All the above. I mean, we, you know, we constantly work. Every, you know, one thing you have to understand about a university is every three years we have a totally new customers. You know, your customers might stay around for a long time. Ours move on and, and do this. So we, we repeat a lot of things that we do. Uh, we address situations whenever, you know, this is not the first time we've addressed this topic. It's the first time in recent history that this is the first time that the, the, the complexity of it is, is several matters coming together where we, we, we've intervened at this level. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, we'll just have to see how it plays out. Now, you talked about ending a meeting around 4, and then at 8 o'clock you guys released the statement that this was off. But did something happen within that four-hour window to make you guys say this is done? Well, nothing happened. Okay. So, in other words, we met with a group of individuals that were the chapter leaders, the chapter president. And we said, here's our situation. Here's where we are. Uh, I outlined uh, the three points and uh, between. And we said, we've got to hear back from you quick. I mean, the clock is ticking. We met with them on Monday. The staff did uh, uh, with the leadership. Nothing happened. We had additional two additional incidents. Um, and, you know, the clock said, you got to get it. you got to get it. So we gave them an opportunity, that last opportunity, to, to hey, let's take, the, let's take the reins of this wagon and steer it to the right place. And they chose not to. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we have to all be accountable. That's, that's where we are. So you're saying the chance was given? Yes. To a hundred percent unequivocally given several times this week uh, for the students, for the, for the student leadership and the fraternities to correct the situation themselves. What did you all find unacceptable about some of the like tenants that the Greek Council proposed to fix this? I talked to a member earlier today who said he met with you guys uh, earlier on this week. He cited they, they stay, uh, wanted to do a six-month social probation, and uh, you know further further violations by anyone else you know would be dealt with case by case basis. What did you guys not like about what they proposed? Well, I you know the staff evaluated those in detail, but what, I think the overriding thing that, that swayed me, Cameron, was just the credibility of we've been told several things this week, and every time we've been told something, it, it doesn't happen, and so we we. Did not get a confidence level that what we were hearing then was going to actually happen. Right. So there's different. You can tell me a lot of things, but if you don't have credibility, you know, I, I I'm not going to go there. So is that we, is that why the Greek Council has ultimately been suspended as well? Well, that's you know that's their business. We're chosen not to deal with that group because we can't deal with somebody that, that doesn't uphold the standards that we need to uphold.